Hello, my name's Keith Rucker. Um, got a little interesting project I thought I'd share with you guys today. Uh, this is uh, an expansion gear off of the machine that I'm working on restoring. And uh, when we took this thing apart, um, the back part of this piece here had broken off. Um, fortunately, we were able to find the broken cap off of this. What I've done is I've gone here and I've brazed this all back together. Um, but I want to just make sure that we got a real good repair on this. Let me get in here a little bit closer where you can see this real good. Okay, so you can see what we're dealing with. This uh, end piece had broken off. Uh, I took this, I didn't do this on camera, but I took it and I uh, cleaned it up real good, put a ground, a good V-slot on, on all sides. We heated this up, brazed it back together. And uh, I've had real good luck brazing cast iron. It, it, it makes a good repair. Uh, but I just want to make sure uh, I tend to, I guess my saying is, is if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, and this probably isn't necessary, but I want to really make sure we got a good repair on this. So I'm going to come in here and do an extra step and uh, take and drill and tap uh, two screws, one on each side, uh, to just a 1032 screw that uh, we will then take and just, and just tighten this up. And that will just give it some extra support uh, down through there. It'd be like pinning it together, but we'll have the threads in there as well. So. We've got this set up on the uh, vertical mill now. Um, I'm gonna come in here with a center drill. We'll center drill two holes, uh, drill those out, tap them, countersink them, and uh, then we'll put uh, two screws in here. Uh, also, um, this, uh, the inside of this, this hole had bored. This uh, is on a, sh on a shaft that's rotating inside of this, and over the years, uh, it had worn on one side. So as long as I had the brazing out and I had everything heated up, I, I built up the side of the of the hole of the bore that had been worn. So we're going to take this and we'll uh, lay it on its side and using a boring head we're going to go ahead and bore this background uh, true. So that's the project for the day. Alright I've got this um, piece already set up in the mill to drill out here so it's just sitting up straight. I've just eyeballed this. It's not super critical uh, that it be perfectly square. We're just trying to get some support in there. So first step is I've got a center drill in here and I want to choke up on that center drill as tight as I can get so I don't want to get any flex because I am going to be starting a hole on a pretty sharp incline here. So I'll start out real slow, ease into it, and get a full profile for my drill bit to go down. Start out by just kind of pecking that until I get my hole started. Just using some tap magic as lubricant here. All right, I think we're going good now. All right, I've got a good hole there that I can follow down with my drill bit now. Um, so we'll go ahead and grab our drill bit and get going. We're going to tap this at 1024. Uh, so I'm using a uh, number 25 drill bit here um, for the tap to go down. So we'll get that in there. All right, now I'm going to uh, drill a uh, 3 16 hole above that, and this will be for the top. I really don't want to thread it all the way through. Um, I just want the, the top to, to be pulling down on it, so, um, and we've got the, uh, the top of the screw will be really doing that. But this will just be clearance for the threads in the top part, and again, I'm just going to drill down. I can feel when I get to that brass layer, because like I said, it just feels different on the quill and uh, that's when I will stop uh, and let the threads just be in the bottom half of the, the casting. Now I'm going to put a countersink in here and uh, we'll countersink all the way down until I have an edge coming around the edge there for my screw to go in. Turn that speed down a little bit on this and adjust my handle on my quill where I'm pulling down. And All right, 
down below that now. All right, next we're going to run the tap down. Um, I like using that little spring-loaded thing to keep this lined up. Unfortunately, uh, the top of this tap doesn't have a center hole in it. It's uh, just not the right kind to use with that. Uh, but since I have the top half of this hole uh, drilled out oversized, that's actually going to give me a little guide uh, for this tap to start down. Put a little lube in there. And we'll tap this down to the bottom of the hole. I'm going to pull this out where I can get my screwdriver in there. And we'll tighten that screw right up on there. All right, there's the finished uh, repair. Uh, we did both sides. Um, like I said, this probably wasn't totally necessary. I think my brazing job would have held up on this just fine, but a little bit of extra uh, support in there sure can't hurt. Um, and I'm uh, about to also go to a little bit extra effort again on this that's uh, probably not necessary. I, I don't like the way this looks. It does give a lot of strength, but again, this is a museum restoration. If this was just, you know, go get the machine running, I probably wouldn't go to this effort that I'm about to do, but I, I want to hide this. So I'm actually going to heat this up and fill these in with braze, and, uh, and then we'll grind that back down smooth, and the repair will not be noticeable, but you will permanently have that strength in there that we need, uh, or that we might, we might need uh, down the road. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and fill those up with braze now. I'm going to try to show you guys this brazing. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work with the camera, but we'll give it a try. Uh, if it makes it in the video, it worked. <laughs> so we'll fire up our torch. And we'll see how this goes. I'm just going to heat this up until it gets kind of a cherry red color. All right, that's side one done. I just uh, put enough raisin there to make it a, a little bit higher and then I will grind that down um, after it cools down. We'll flip the part over and do the other side. All right, we'll let that cool off. I let this part cool down over there in the vise for, I don't know, about an hour or so until I could come in there and touch it with my hand. Uh, we took it out, uh, ground down uh, this the areas that we filled in with the braze. Uh, so we got a nice uh, finish again. And when we put a coat of paint on that, you want to be able to tell that, that those uh, screws were put in there, which was my goal, was to hide this repair in this particular situation. Um, I've now got my boring head uh, mounted on the mill, and uh, I came in here, and on this back side back here, this was the original bore. Uh, the wear was on this side over here, which is why I filled that in with braze. But what I did was I just came in here and I swept along uh, what little bit of bore that I had left in there and, and tried to get my cutter centered up in here as good as I can. And uh, on this particular part, this is not a super critical measurement. Uh, uh, it's, it's just 
a spacer or, or we got two shafts and this is anyway it's, it's just not a super critical distance in there so I'm not too worried about I've got a little bit of a, a leeway in here but it should be pretty darn close by going in here and feeling along that edge and right now I've got the uh, bore set to just start cutting in this braze in here and uh, we'll go ahead and start doing this just a little bit on uh, boring heads if you've never used these before um, they're fairly straightforward you can do some very precision boring on the milling machine um, the the bottom three set screws down here are where you tighten up your um, your uh, um, boring bar in here you can either there's two one hole in the end one hole in the center and then you also got holes on the outside out here that you can sweep have your cutter your boring bar coming out long ways and, and sweep around so it's a very versatile uh, tool for uh, boring all kinds of different uh, uh, sizes um, so you tighten your boring bar up here these three set screws tighten a gib in here uh, that this dovetail uh, slides on and there's a allen screw on this side that you just tighten it up it has gradations on there so you can see how many thousandths of an inch uh, you're moving the cutter head uh, or the boring bar so what you want to do here is just snug these up you don't want them super super tight where you can't move it but you want it tight enough that it takes a little force when you move that out uh, but you don't have to tighten these down between every every uh, cut uh, the tension in the in the screw will really take care of a lot of that so I've also got my feed set on the milling machine um, and I think it's on about three thousandths per revolution is what we're feeding right now we're going to give that a try see how it goes and um, anyway we'll engage that and just let it auto feed down I put my head in neutral a while ago with a spin it there we go so I'm just going to feed this down to where it's just touching and then I will engage the auto feed that went real good and uh, so we'll come over here adjust this out a little bit and take another pass and that should be about ten thousandths I think I'm gonna go about twenty thousandths on that and we'll make another pass All right, I think we've cleaned it up all the way around. We're going to call that good. All right, so there's the uh, finished piece. Uh, you can see down in there in the bore where the bronze, where we had some wear, and where the brake was that was repaired on the inside, and uh, back around to the bronze that I added in there. So we're ready to paint this. A uh, little trick. Uh, little trick I learned for uh, painting something where you don't want to get paint on the inside of a board is just take a little piece of paper, uh, roll it up and a little bit undersized and then put it down there and let it expand back out to normal size. Now you can paint that and the inside of your hole is masked off. Heck of a lot easier than trying to tape it. Uh, I mean then you can just flip them over and, and uh, use the same scrolls. So there you go. We're going to put some paint on this and uh, call this expansion gear repair done. <laughs>